So, uh, Javier, I think we can start. Okay. Uh, welcome to all the participants and uh, uh, spectators who are watching us all, uh, with YouTube. Uh, we uh, we uh, primarily chat a little bit uh, before the start of the afternoon session, but our no uh, keynote speaker for today is Javier Ruiz. Uh, architect and prof professor of interdisciplinary architecture at University of Madrid, Spain. So Javier, you can start this uh, virt virtual stage. Zoom stage is yours. Okay. You Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Svetlana. Thank you very much. I'm going to try to, to, to share my, uh, my, my presentation. I hope we, I don't have any problem in 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 sharing it. Uh, so just click share screen. Yeah. So down you have this uh, green. Uh, okay, we are. We okay, are okay. I hope you have the the yes. presentation there. Maybe yes. you can see it. We we saw we see presentation. Everything okay. is fine. Okay, thank you, thank you. Well, with, uh, well, uh, thank you, Svetlana. Good afternoon. Uh, well, I'm I'm sorry I can speak Serbian. But I would like to, to first of all thank for the, for the, the invitation. I'm going to try to to Savaludians Universitetu Umetnosti Ubeugradu and and also thanks to to Birmingham City University for this uh, invitation to 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 share some of my thoughts uh, under this strange title the which is time traveling the city as a as a time machine as uh, Svetlana has said uh, I'm an I'm an, an architect specialized in urban planning and with a vision I would I would like to think of about myself an interdisciplinary vision uh, trying to to combine uh, different different uh, different uh, disciplines this interdisciplinary uh, point of view that for me is very important and has been very important in my uh, research and in my uh, work as, a, as an architect and in particular as a, as a planner. Uh, sometimes, uh, well, I sometimes I, I start my uh, some presentations with, uh, with this image. Uh, or, or an image taken. I I, I like uh, movies. I like cinema very much, and I I take many many images from from movies. You're going to see it uh, around my presentation. This uh, this is a, a a picture, a still frame of uh, a recent movie, Blade Runner uh, 2049, uh, a movie of 2017. Uh, a uh, well-known well-known movie, a uh, uh, Hollywood black, blackbuster, uh, and I ask. Uh, sometimes I ask my my students uh, about this uh, this this picture, about this uh, this movie, and ask them if uh, what we can see in this movie, in this uh, second part of Blade Runner, would be a possible future. Most of them, most of them uh, answered that the, their, their answer is, is yes. We can see a possible future of uh, here picture in, in Blade Runner 2049. Uh, it's a wrong answer. It's a wrong answer. Uh, what we see, what uh, this movie, Blade Runner 2049, presents us, it's not a, a possible future. Look at this frame. Look at this frame. Here we can see uh, a car uh, flying. A car, uh, a car flying. It would be possible. In fact, it would be, would be possible right now. We have the, the 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 technology that would allow us to have uh, flying cars. Uh, so if we have the technology. 
why this uh, picture, why this picture should be, from my point of view, completely impossible. The impossibility, the, the impossibility of the future presented in this picture doesn't have to do with the flying car. It has to do with the, with the advertising we see here. What we see here is an advertising of a, a video games uh, enterprise, Atari, who was very, which was very, very, very famous, was the most important video games company in the 18th last century. So in Blade Runner, in Blade Runner, the original movie, we can see advertisements of Atari, we can see advertisements of different different uh, companies all around the movie. Most of the movies, there is a, it's a, there is an, a very interesting article on uh, publicity and advertisements in Blade Runner, in Blade Runner, and except for one company, which is, of course, Coca-Cola, all the companies, all the companies reflected in the original Blade Runner has, have broken down Atari, Panam, all, all of them, all of them. So what has happened? What has happened between these two, between these two movies? What has, what has happened between these two movies is that there have been some time bifurcations in the timeline, in the timeline. So for instance, if we see this, this uh, still taken also for from Blade Runner 2049, we can see here uh, at the on the right on the image product of SSSR, the uh, former uni, uh, uh, Soviet Union. Of course, uh, during the when when the, the 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 first the original Blade Runner movie in the 80s last last century was launched. Uh, the Soviet Union still uh, existed, still existed Atari, still existed Pan Am, all those uh, countries, uh, this country and, and, all the, and all the companies. But uh, things have changed. His, things have changed uh, a lot. In fact, what the original Blade Runner movie uh, here on the, on the, on the left uh, showed us was a possible future, a possible future to imagine to imagine in the 18th last, uh, last century. But with the future that Blade Runner 2049 is showing us is not a possible future because it's not a, a future conceived from, from right now, from the, the times that this movie has been launched. It's in fact, it's a, a continuation of the original Blade Runner, but it's not a continuation of the future, the real future that Blade Runner has turned into, which is which was not the future that the original Blade Runner first presented us. I'm going to try to 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 go back to this to this to this idea in along this this presentation. Some years ago, as you see in 2019, just before the the the, the COVID pandemic, we had a conference in in Madrid of a, a professor, a, a, a well friend of mine, the Professor Yuval Portugali from from Tel Aviv University, who gave us uh, a lecture on this topic, complexity, cognition, and the city. Uh, the Professor Portugali, my, my friend Yuval, uh, showed us a very, very interesting concept, which is the concept of chronisthesia. chronisthesia. Uh, what is this, this concept of, of chronisthesia? Uh, here we see the the city through the looking glass. Uh, the the looking glass, of course, we are ref, uh, referring to Alice in through the uh, the looking glass, the novel by 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 Lewis Carroll of the nineteenth century. Here we can see this this uh, very interesting uh, dialogue between the the White Queen and Alice. Uh, I don't understand you," said Alice. "It's dreadfully confusing." That's the effect of living backwards, the queen said uh, kindly. It always makes one a little giddy at first. Living backwards, Alice repeated in great uh, astonishment. I never heard of such a thing. But there's only uh, there's one great advantage in it, that one's memory works both ways. 
I'm sure mine only works one way, Alice remarked it. I can remember things before they happen. It's a poor sort of memory that only works backwards, the Queen remarked. This idea of the memory, the memory uh, working both ways, working, uh, having a memory of the past, obvious, but also a memory of the future, could sound as strange, as uh, sounds strange to, to, to Alice. But uh, maybe logic uh, leads us to uh, be, uh, to agree with Alice. But the, the right answer, uh, although it sounds illogic at all, is that maybe, maybe, maybe the White Queen is, is, is right. The White King is, is right. And the White King is right because recent uh, research has uh, um, launched this new concept, the concept of chronesthesia, mental time travel, a brain's ability to think about the past, the present, and the future. Here we have this, this, this paragraph that certain regions see the left lateral parietal cortex, left frontal cortex, and cerebellum, as well as the thalamus, were activated differently with the subjects thought about the past and future compared with the present. Notably, brain activity was very similar for thinking about all of the non-present times, the imagined past, the real past, and the imagined future. This is very interesting. This is very interesting. We usually tend to think that we live in the present. It's not true at all. It's not true at all. And I send you a hypothesis. The, the, hope, uh, the hypothesis is that, that humans, that we humans, tend to mentally travel in time, continually back to the past, as well as forward to the future. We are continu uh, continuously traveling in time. In fact, what is virtually impossible is to experience the present. The present. Uh, if you uh, want to experience the present, you have to take a lot of mental effort uh, uh, to, to have a state of meditation, uh, which is, for me, it's completely impossible to, to, to have this, this, this level of meditation that uh, could leave me to experience the, the present. Uh, I am always thinking, living in the past, and projecting myself in the future. And the second hypothesis is that the surrounding space, the city we live in, contains the information that we use as a fuel to, uh, to time travel. For me, for me, and uh, upon this hypothesis, the city is a time machine, and its information contained in the city and perceived by, by us, by humans, the full and the main tools we use to try and, to try and travel. A second sort of hypothesis developed apart from, from uh, this first suggestion by, by Professor Portugalis is that planning and design are direct manifestations of human chronesthetic and constructive memory. We are always making plans. Maybe think, think of what you are thinking right now you are thinking right now if you are going to to make your your intervention the, after after my my speech now, now you are you are planning what to say you are planning what to what to do you are planning where where what what to are you going to do this weekend what are you going to where are you going to spend the holy week we are continually making plans in the future by using the information we have and we take from the past we take from the past to project this, this, this future. It's not only what I say that humans have the ability to for mental time, time travel, but that we cannot not mentally travel in time. It's not that we can travel in time, it's that we cannot not travel in time. We are always traveling in time, using this information from the past to project our future. We humans are natural planners. We plan as a natural performance. We cannot stop performing. And while performing, we are naturally designing the future. Every movement, every thought, every action we do changes the future, design a new future. This is very interesting. We cannot predict the future, but we cannot not design it. We are always designing the future, although we cannot predict it. This is very interesting because uh, we are continu uh, uh, continuously uh, performing 
time traveling actions. Here we have a, a, a picture of a, of another of another uh, of another movie, one of my favorite movies, which is La Yete. It's a, a picture of uh, 1962, I think, uh, uh, 20. 20 minutes long uh, movie, which was been one of the most influential movies in the last uh, half century. Uh, many, most of the of the movies uh, touching the, the 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 topic of of time traveling, such as Twelve Monkeys or Terminator, couldn't uh, be understood without this. This is the, without this movie. This movie, La Jete, uh, it's like a handbook to time travel uh, because we behave and act in response to a plan of design that uh, that is in response to a, re a reality that doesn't just exist, might never exist. Uh, the future we, we have in time may, may, may never exist, but we have to uh, live and make plans and behave and perform as if the future we imagine would have the possible to assist. Uh, please, if you don't, haven't seen this movie, please go to to YouTube. Go to uh, because it's very very easy to access to to it. I think it's it's only twenty minutes, and it's a a, a, a great uh, a, a, a experience. Urban agents behave and act in response to planar designs, in response to a, re a reality that doesn't just exist and might never exist. I, we have in response to invisible cities by using the city as a time machine. Uh, here we have some, some pictures of this, this uh, movie, and I uh, encourage you to, to, to see it, please. Uh, it would be, maybe, maybe it was a, a movie that changed my, my life uh, some years ago, and I invite you to, 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 to watch it. Um, because urban agents behave and act in response to plan design, and uh, as I have told you, if you have seen maybe this more, um, famous uh, movie, Alphaville, by, by Jean-Luc Godard, which is more or less the, the same time, I think it's of 1965. Uh, here, the, the secret agent, Lemmy Caution, uh, travels, time travels to, to Alphaville just by performing it. He, he doesn't need anything. He doesn't need a, a vehicle. He doesn't need a, a machine. He just uh, have to uh, performatively, naturally go to a future city and uh, try, in this case, to, to rescue the, the, the girl, in this case, uh, Anna Karina. Here we have, uh, maybe you have seen this, this movie, which is also, also very, very, very important for, for, for time, time traveling. Here uh, I have chosen a, a picture of this, of the, the of, of Lemmy Caution, the, the secret agent in, in Alphaville with the, the subtitles. I see people have become slaves to probability. Probability is one of the uh, key uh, the the keywords also in this in this topic in this topic. I because as I have said, every person uh, should be considered as a secret agent and is a planner just by being a performer. And performance is closely linked to cognition to the information we perceive. So therefore, it's linked to probability, to probability, the ability, the ability we have to interpret, use the information, the information. Uh, a, a quotation by Elia Prigojin, uh, a Nobel Prize in of chemistry, that uh, he, he says that a crystal can be maintained in a vacuum, but we isolate the, the town, it would die. If you put a city in a vacuum, it would disintegrate because cities and towns are open and complex systems. They are open to the environment. And we humans are a main part of the environment. We change information with the city. We humans are uh, continuously exchanging information with our environment. The city is the human envi envi uh, environment. And we humans 
at the city's environment. We are different systems that are continuously changing information. We humans are not part of the city, but we are strongly linked to the city and use them the same that the city use us to uh, change information and to sur survive. So in, the, in this uh, context, performative actions, cognition are the main tools humans at city use to exchange information. The, the, the third hypo hypothesis is the role of performative actions. We humans, uh, as, as I have said, we I developed these are the the two two books I I wrote. These these are from my from my PhD twenty years ago, which developed this this idea this this concept uh, this concept of uh, the the linkage between humans and spaces and the exchange of information uh, and the role of this information in the particularly the particular linkage between uh, human species and the uh, space we live in we live in here we have the past the present in gray and the future and the key is information i'm not going to stop it there is a, an, an article in here but it's it's in spanish by by a, a physician uh, jorge wagensberg an old friend of mine uh, that wrote uh, about the idea of information and El País, which is the, the most important newspaper here in, in, in Spain, developing this, this idea. It's the information that established the, uh, the door that leads the past, uh, that links the past to the future. Present doesn't exist. Doesn't exist like uh, uh, it's just a gap in information. We have a close information of the past that can send uh, permit us to imagine and design the future and design the future. So if we don't have the the information of the future, uh, the future, did it doesn't uh, invalidate our ability? to perform. We have to perform in terms of, of uh, in times of uncertainty. This is a picture of the this Nobel Prize, the Ilya Prigojin, and this is a very known, well-known scheme of a timeline, uh, a timeline uh, used for complex systems. Complex systems have the ability to change, but have the ability to change in terms of probability. We don't know what's going to how is going to be the city tomorrow uh, next week in the next two years and also we don't know how we are going to 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 be uh, tomorrow next weeks in the next two years but the idea of do we of not having certainty of what we are going to be how we are going to be in the in the in the in the next future doesn't invalidate our decision it it uh, it and more uh, it take us to perform a different way a different way by using this complex uh, timeline full of uh, bifurcations in fact we have uh, developed this is a, a, a diagram that uh, for, for this physician Jorge Wagensberg and Ines Aquilue, who was a former student of mine, now a collaborator. Uh, we use we use to uh, each of these points is a possible bifurcation of the future. It's like the 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 garden of, of forking paths of, by Jorge Luis Borges, uh, taking to to projecting to to the future. Uh, so we have different possible futures, and the possible futures are linked to fear, are linked to desire could leave us to um, more dystopic or utopic uh, visions. But of course, future is not predictable, but it's possible, it's even necessary to plan and build it, to orientate the future. So we need to build future narratives. And uh, sometimes it's very useful for us to use science fiction as a tool to build this future 
narratives. I love this 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 is uh, this book by 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 Frederick Jameson. Uh, the 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 saying the, the the title is just enough uh, clear. Archaeologists of the future. Arche we usually think of archaeology as a, a discipline to investigate the past. We should change our mind and use this archaeology also to, to, to project that in the future. As for instance, this 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 one of my uh, of my 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 key uh, reference in the this history of architecture. This is William Morris, an, an architecture, an architect, uh, a British architect in the 19th century. He designed, he designed the best the best pieces of furniture, the best uh, clothes, the best uh, houses in the in the 19th century, uh, undoubtedly. He was one of the most important architects. At the end of the of, of his life, he wrote a novel. He wrote a science fiction novel, this science fiction novel, which is uh, News from Nowhere. What was William Morris doing when writing this novel? Was he trying to 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 write a fairy tale for for his uh, grand, grand grandsons i'm not sure i'm not sure at all what he was doing is designing the future but not a house not a piece of furniture he was designing an entire world an entire future world he was designing a, a, a narrative and this narrative led us to some other narratives like this book, Tomorrow, A Peaceful Path to, to Real Reform by Ebenezer Howard, who was the uh, book that uh, developed the idea of the Garden City. The idea of the Garden City is the idea that has led us to the, the present, excuse me, for, for the, the present we live now. Nothing around us would be the same without this book. This book, with uh, schemes like like this one of a uh, uh, well-known drawing like this one this is uh, the, the the drawing and the book the narrative where everybody that we can experience now the live uh, the, the every city we we live now comes from this uh, book written at the very beginning of the of the of the 20th century with this uh, idea of the of a garden city with pictures like this one this is Letchworth in the in the north of uh, of london nothing le corbusier i hate him uh, but uh, this this uh, representative of uh, the the brutalist architecture or these visions of utopia, the pop utopia, or these uh, images like the, the Rockefeller Center in New York City. They would be inconceivable without these narratives. These narratives that has led us think of this, this, this movie in the in the 30s, last, like Century, Things to Come by William Cameron Menzies, which we can we can see it's it's great this 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 picture. Uh, we can see the through the windows this scheme exactly the same of a garden city, or we can see this recognizable, uh, recognized, very re easy to recognize chair in the in the first uh, plane. Uh, and the future, but the future has also to do, and I am I'm trying to 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 finish, also with the complexity. Because complexity gave us a freedom degrees to behave. Different future has to do with the complex of the present system. This uh, was uh, an idea that another architect, a very very important architect, Christopher Alexander, developed uh, last last century. Think of, uh, look at this uh, picture. This picture show us a. Uh, very common. This is this is in the United States. This is in the in in the United States and show us uh, a well-known neighborhood. What uh, is the problem with this neighborhood? The problem with this neighborhood is that it's so well designed. So well designed. Of course, I'm saying with a lot of irony. Um, it's so well designed that only permit us to behave the correct way. This kind of neighborhoods doesn't allow us any degree of freedom. 
they, it's impossible that these neighborhoods can achieve a different future of its own present. Look at this. This is the the architect of uh, the, the same architect of the of the the, the twin towers in in New York City, uh, Minoru Yamasaki. Uh, this is the, the 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 neighborhood. What happened? That uh, in 15 years, it was the most dangerous and the most degraded neighborhood in the United States, but it couldn't experience it couldn't uh, it wasn't designed to achieve any 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 future what happened what happened was this that the only possible future was to demolish this the this uh, conflicting uh, neighborhood in fact an uh, historian and architectural historian said that modern architecture died in san luis missouri in july 15 1972 at 3 3 3 uh, 30, 32 p.m or thereabouts it's not true it's not true uh, unfortunately modern architecture is still it's a still alive. It's a still alive. It's a still alive. Uh, we can see these pictures I took uh, three years ago in Santiago de Chile, which are, uh, from my point of view, completely, completely terrible. But, but uh, the last hypothesis is that once uncertainty increases, complexity can leave us to, to lead us to uh, different possible futures. Like in this, in this picture, uh, this is uh, Beirut. In, in Lebanon, uh, we had uh, an, an structure. Uh, this is a, a way of representation. This this old former student of mine, Ines Akilue, and I developed to 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 represent complexity and to represent the ability to project this city in the future. It's a complex representation, and going to stop in 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 it. But. It has to do with the degrees of uh, of uh, freedom. I I love this picture on the on the on the on the left, which you, all of you know. This by by Peter Bregel the Elder, Children Games in the Kunsthistorischen Museum in in Vienna in Austria, that uh, show us a space that you can lift. Uh, you you are able uh, and you are free to perform everything you you want. Uh, from this city, everything is possible. Every future is possible. That's what I say. I see uh, what I what I, what I have written the, uh, here. Every performative and control action creates a bifurcation, breaks the linear order, creates a different future among possible possible ones. Um, possible ones. This has, has an, I'm not going to stop in it. A, a, a mathematical apparatus. I'm not going to to also. But uh, this this uh, sentence is in, interesting. When uncertainty increases, living systems and the city and we as our living systems tend to move to, up to hierarchical levels of selection by organizing themselves into collective entities that have a greater or lesser degree of individuality. Complexity has to do with freedom, with a particular topological, spatial uh, um, structure. For for instance, these new new cities. This is Dubai. It has no complexity at all. This city has no complexity at all. This city has no complexity at all. This is Dubai, and. Uh, what is uh, interesting, but there is a, a possible uh, a, 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 a city that could lead us to lead us to uh, a wide range of uh, of future, and paradoxically, it's the city that has strong roots in the past. This is an, exper an experiment, a theoretical uh, work by uh, uh, an architectural and planning office in, in Manchester, in the, in the United Kingdom, which is a, a future garden city designed from a theoretical ancestor, uh, ancestor a theoretical uh, Roman origin uh, British uh, village. It's a very, very uh, interesting, interesting uh, experience. A new garden city that will appear in the UK for the first time in a in hundred years. 
I'm ending the now time traveling. I'm inviting you to use uh, and to recognize that you are always staying time traveling, not inviting you to time travel. Uh, you are time traveling right now uh, at, 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 this mo at, this, at this moment. Just experience this, this uh, time traveling, ending with these two sentences uh, that I love. A city is a place where there is no need to wait for next week to get the answer to a question, to taste the food of any country, to find new voices to listen and to, and familiar ones to listen to again by anthropologist Margaret Mead. And this, uh, the only thing that makes life possible is permanent, intolerable uncertainty, not knowing what comes next by Ursula Grover Le Guin, which is uh, the, the science fiction uh, author, one of my, my favorite, my favorite. And uh, that's all. So, Ekpala, uh, um, thank you for, for your attention. Thank you, Javier. Muchas gracias. Fantastic. Yay. <laughs> gracias. Thank you thank very you. much, Javier, for this nonlinear traveling through the space and time. It was <laughs> great and very inspiring for the beginning. And, and uh, I hope that all of uh, participants are very inspired to continue.